another big player in the uh, acute inflammation saga is platelet activating factor. It's probably even a bigger player in the coagulation saga, but the two are tied in together. So let's remember that platelet activating factor or PAF is a phospholipid. It uh, is made by a whole wide variety of cells um, like, the, like the eicosanoids are. And what, are the, what does it do? Well, it activates platelets. And specifically, uh, PAF is produced in response to specific stimuli by a variety of cell types, including neutrophils, basophils, platelets, and endothelial cells. The end result is that you have a product which will be a very powerful stimulator of platelets for both coagulation and the uh, inflammation saga as well. And let's just uh, keep it at that. Let's talk about the general family of cytokines and chemokines. Are they the same? No, they're a little bit different, but sometimes they're used interchangeably. Uh, they're both uh, proteins. Chemokines are a little bit smaller than cytokines, and chemokines are mostly involved uh, to attract uh, PMNs to the area of injury or chemotactic agents. But cytokines are proteins produced by many cells, uh, usually lymphocytes and macrophages, and they have not only a direct role in acute and chronic inflammation, but they have a very indirect role. And there's a whole wide variety of them, and there's actually a gazillion. But I want to just for now single out a couple of them, because these are always mentioned at the top of the list. We talk about uh, substances involved in uh, acute inflammation, and one of them is TNF, or tumor necrosis factor alpha. As you might guess, there's a beta, but alpha is the prominent one. And interleukin-1, and as you know, there's a whole family of interleukins as well. Uh, they're both produced by macrophages. And uh, the reason why I mention these is that not only are they have a direct uh, role of the processes we described visually at many levels, but they are also controllers of other cytokines as well. So I guarantee you, when you have a long list of uh, cytokines involved in this or that or this or that process, you'll always have TNS-alpha and interleukin-1 at the top of the list. Let's move on to a very small chemical called nitric oxide. It's made by the action of nitric oxide synthetase from the regular old amino acid arginine. Well, you can see there's a little nitro area here. It gets split off by this enzyme in the process. NADPH goes to NADP+. The substance is then called citrulline, which is arginine, with the end of its uh, uh, amino group split off a little bit. And it is probably one of the most potent vasodilators in the world. And uh, as you know classically from pharmacology, there's one drug which uh, is a powerful producer of nitric oxide. And I don't have to tell you what this is because just open up your email right now and you'll see about 20 ads for Viagra. And even if you're a lady, you'll see it. So uh, let's just say the role of nitric oxide in vasodilatation cannot be uh, emphasized enough in acute inflammation. Let's talk about those little granules in the neutrophil. We talked about the cells. Let's talk about the granules in them. Well, in the earlier, uh, less differentiated forms of the neutrophils, like the uh, promyelocytes and uh, in that range, myelocytes, the granules are what they call nonspecific. They're also called primary. As the cell matures, they get more specific, and they're called secondary. And basically, they're just bags of enzymes in the lysosomes, which digest things. And as the primary granule turns into secondary with maturation of the cell, your uh, primary enzymes in them, like acid hydrolases, lysozyme for bacteria, myeloperoxidases, actually uh, get a little more mature, and now they develop into things that will digest collagen or alkaline phosphatase or lactoferrin or lysozyme. So you should also, you should always have a general recognition, at least in the mature neutrophil, what those enzymes are inside the lysosomes that make them granules of granulocytes. 
And if you want to rattle off four things, or remember four things, lactoferrin, lysozyme, alkaline phosphatase, and collagenase. Let's talk about free radicals, as long as we're talking about some smaller chemicals. Free radicals are extremely, extremely destructive uh, things that can be produced uh, from toxins, from radiations, from viruses even, which result in these things which are like ions without partners, like superoxide or peroxide or the hydroxyl radical. These are things which uh, are uh, either uh, a cause of damage and acute inflammation or sometimes part of the whole process. Last but not least, I didn't want to throw this in, but I will anyway. We have this family of neuropeptides, and they're produced in the central nervous system, and they have a role in inflammation. They also have a role in neurotransmission as well. But uh, there's a 11 amino acid polypeptide called substance P, and it's tied into many things uh, in uh, uh, the CNS, like mood disorders, anxiety, stress. But it's also uh, involved in some of the things we notice in the inflammatory process. Neurokinin A is uh, the first and prominent member of the family of neurokinins, which are also uh, neurotransmitters as well. Uh, of all the things we talked about as chemical mediators of acute inflammation, this one is the most wimpy, but I think I had to throw it anyway. And at least you'll be very, very happy to know we're at the end of our discussion on chemical mediators. Now we're going to get into something very fun and logical again. And what is that? We're going to go back to the saga. We're going to talk about the only three possible outcomes of acute inflammation. We talked about the saga. We talked about the chemicals. We talked about some of the processes. Let's talk about now what the only three possible outcomes could be. Number one, the tissue could return back to normal histology again, or complete resolution. Number two, it could heal with a scar or fibrosis as part of the process, and we're going to deal with that in the third chapter. Or, if the stimulus which caused the acute inflammation is still present, but the acute phase is gone, it could progress into chronic inflammation. And now, right now, I want to tell you the difference between acute and chronic inflammation. In acute inflammation, the cells which infiltrate the tissue are polys. In chronic inflammation, the cells which infiltrate the normal histology tissue are monos. So just as uh, though uh, neutrophils are the neutrophil cell of acute inflammation, mononuclear cells like lymphocytes and macrophages are the chief infiltrating cell of chronic inflammation from a morphologic basis alone. That is the precise definition. Let's talk about some of the morphologic patterns of acute inflammation or the exudate produced from it. Well, if the exudate produced from it is basically watery, it's serous. If it has a lot of fibrin because it's been tied in with the coagulation uh, cascade, it's fibrinous. You'll see a lot of fibrin. If the main production of the exudate is Neutrophils, that's pus. Neutrophil, pus is defined as a pocket of neutrophils. If it is associated with ulceration of an overlying epithelium or mucosa, either as a cause of the acute inflammation or a result, then we have the fourth pattern of acute inflammation or ulcerative. And let's look at some nice pictures now. That's serous, isn't it? That's water inside of a blister. It doesn't matter what caused it. The chief exudate there is plain old water, and that's what fills the blister. Let's say we're talking about an inflammatory process now uh, involving the heart or a pericarditis. Well, what do you think all that red stuff is uh, on coating the pericardium? That's fibrin. Underneath is a bunch of neutrophils. The third pad is purulent or pus. And remember, an abscess is, not, is no more than a pocket of pus. 
there's an abscess. All it is is neutrophils, a little bit of fibrin. The fourth pattern is ulcerative. You can have ulceration secondary to acute inflammation, or the breakage of that uh, mucosa can cause the acute inflammation. And we're going to have to close up shop for now again. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.